All right, welcome back. This will be Breakout Lab 6. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm using the Windows Visual Studio for this one. I'm going to pick the Breakout Project template that we've been using. And I'll just call this Breakout 6 and make sure it's going to my document repos. Um, there haven't been any changes to the FTC Geo library, so you don't need to do the git um, uh, pull, but uh, it's okay if you do, just out of habit. Um, so I've got a new project open. I should have my files already linked in. This is based off of Lab 5 where we created our header file. Um, so I have my breakout header file here with the uh, window width and height and title. Um, you may see some additional comments. I went back and added some commenting and resaved my template. So uh, when I go into my breakout, um, I have some more commenting now in here um, that I've saved as part of my template. You can just save right over your template to add new functionality to your template. Okay, let's jump right into this. Uh, we want to draw the ball uh, that we're going to have in our breakout game, and then we're going to move the ball around the screen um, using the keyboard input that we've been doing. So we're going to start in our header file by um, setting up some game components. And specifically in here, let's start with the ball. Uh, and let's start with the um, size of the ball. So we'll just do something like ball size equals 8. And let's say this is going to be the um, radi radius of the ball in pixels. So obviously the uh, diameter of the ball would be 2 times that radius. And then um, let's let's set a color for the ball. And to do the color, we are actually going to need to start including our FGCU GL library in this header. So I just need to start typing it. Since it sees it as part of the project, I use the double quotes. See, it's linked into our project uh, here. And then um, it sees it using the double quotes. And I'm going to say this is the FGCU OpenGL library. All right, and then now um, I'm just going to treat the color as an integer. And I'm going to call it ball color. I'm going to set that equal to FGCUGL. And then I'm going to pick the color cyan because that's like an aqua color. And that'll stand out real good on our black border or black background that we have right now. And you can even pick any color you want. Um, and we'll be playing with different background colors in the future. And I don't really need to do a comment for this because, you know, based off the name of the variables and the name of the values, it's pretty self-explanatory what that is. All right, so let's come back over here to our main breakout.cpp file. And within here, um, before the main game loop, we want to start defining our game objects, in this case, our balls. So uh, let's do um, the, actually, I'm not even going to worry about, uh, yeah, let's do um, the ball properties. And let's start with, or let's, this is going to be the, the ball starting location. And we're going to do we're going to do some float floating point values here for our ball, and this will be our ball x coordinate, and we're going to set that to the window width window width divided by two, and then our ball y position would be the window height divided by 2. 
All right, and I'm doing integer division because I didn't make this. You know, this is an integer and this is an integer literal, and that's fine. I'm using floats here because I'm, I may be adding floating point values to these positions later. It's okay that I'm initializing them right now with integer um, division. All right, so let's go ahead and draw the ball on the screen. Um, draw ball in new position. And I'm going to say new position because we're setting that new position here, and then we'll be changing it soon. So I'm going to do an FGCUGL uh, draw circle, and we need a. Uh, we can see we need a x coordinate, a y coordinate, a radius, a color, and the number of sides we can leave is 360, so we get a full circle. So we have our ball x and our ball y. Oh, except for I spelled it wrong here. Let me fix that. That was ball y. You guys probably saw that when I typed it. And then we need to set the radius, which we have our constant now, ball size. And then our color we can set with our constant ball color. And then we didn't need to set the um, side, so we can leave that. All right. Let's save this and build. Okay, and all of these errors are in the FGCUGL. They're not actually errors, they're warnings. So those are fine, those are intentional. Uh, just look and make sure that they're not in your source, your breakout CPP or breakout.h files. Okay, so let's go ahead and run. And here's our breakout window with our 8 pixel radius, so a 16 pixel diameter ball centered on our screen. All right. Okay, now it appears that it's not exiting, um, but I found out that's not the OpenGL. I'm not sure why it's doing it. I've been trying to find out, but we can see if we set a breakpoint on the return and we run the debugger and then we close the window. Notice we, we're down here on the return but our terminal window is still is still thinks things are active, and if we come back in here and say continue, the get the program should have ended, but it's not ending. It's still stuck in a debug session. So I'm not sure why this Visual Studio is doing that. Maybe yours isn't, uh, but mine is. But it is. We are catching the uh, window closing event, and we'll be talking more about that in a minute. All right, so to make our ball move, we're going to need to track how fast it's moving vertically and horizontally. So we're going to create some variables to track that, and we'll make those floats so that we can use fractional values um, in the near future. So we are going to have a ball velocity x. And that's going to be its velocity in the vertical. And let's just start it out at zero. And this is um, speed of the ball. This would be horizontally. And then let's do another ball velocity y. And speed of the ball bird. Okay, now to make the ball move, we need a speed factor to add to the ball's velocity x and y um, for every time we, you know, want to make the ball move faster. So let's set that as a property of the ball. And let's go ahead, this will be our game component section, so let's do ball properties. And then let's come down here and let's do another constant and we'll do a float and let's do our ball speed x. 
let's set that to five. And we'll say that's um, a ball incremental speed horizontally. And I'm just going to copy this whole line and do a ball speed y. I'm going to leave it at 5. And this is the, I'm going to take off ball because we can tell that. This will be the incremental speed horizontally in pixels. And this, the y would be vertically in pixels. Right, and since they're floats, let's go ahead and be specific and in, uh, set it with floats. All right, so for the ball properties right now, we have the ball size, color, its speed x, and its speed y. So let's come back over here. And what we would want to do is prior to drawing the ball in its new position, we would want to adjust the ball to new position based on speed. So our ball velocity x, we would simply set it equal to, oh, I'm sorry, we would set the ball x, we would add the ball velocity x to it, which right now is zero. And then same thing for our ball y, we would be adding the ball velocity y. Now obviously um, we don't want to always go positive, but what we'll see is that we can make these negative so that we're actually subtracting from the current position. But this would then allow us to draw, adjust the ball's current x and y for its current velocity, and then draw it in its new position. All right, so nothing should have changed. If we just run right now, we still have a zero velocity. So our ball should always draw in the center of the screen without it moving. All right, so let's make the ball move. To make the ball move, we want to use keyboard input. So just like we did in um, our previous lab, we're going to get keyboard input and let's do it as process keyboard input All right and so first thing we need to do is define a variable to hold the keyboard input and we don't really have to do an unsigned char we could just do a char because we're not using any of the higher level values so let's just leave it as a char and we'll do key and we'll set that equal to and we remember in our FGC GL library we had a get keys function and it didn't take any parameters All right and now we can do a switch on key All right okay uh, so the keys that we were dealing with were the WASD for WASD for up, down, left, and right. And then, of course, the arrow keys were being used as WASD. So let's go ahead and just implement those right now. So we could do a case for W, and this would be um, up. And we'll do a break. And then we could do a case for... Um, S, and this would be down, and then a case for A, and this would be left, and a case for D, and this would be right. All right, and then I don't need a break on the last one. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, we said that W was up, right? So if it's up, we would be increasing speed um, or increasing the velocity Y, the vertical velocity 
we'd be increasing. So we obviously want to add to our velocity y, and what we want to add to it is our speed in the y. Now why would we have a different speed x and y? We can just set that in case we want the ball to move faster horizontally than it does vertically. We'll see that in a minute. So every time we hit the W key, we're going to add ball speed y, which is defined as 5.0, to whatever the current velocity y is. And then we'll add that velocity to the current ball y. So in other words, we will reset the ball y by the current velocity. And the velocity will only be updated each loop if the W key is pressed during that loop. Alright, so let's do the same thing. Let's do um, down. Well, we would do the ball velocity y, but here we would want to mo minus the ball speed y. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish these. Um, for A, we're going uh, we're going to be using the ball velocity x and we're going to minus because we're going left and we'd be minusing the ball speed x and then here for right we would be adding to the ball velocity x the ball speed x all right so let's see what happens i'm going to build All right, and I'm going to go ahead and run. Okay, right now our ball is not moving because our current velocity for x and y are zero, and we have not created any, we haven't added to those velocities any of the speed increments because we haven't hit any keyboard input. So I'm going to hit the up arrow, and our ball flies off the screen. If I hit the down arrow, it probably stopped somewhere and if I hit the down arrow again I might see it come flying by eventually no okay so what is happening all right so what is happening here is this while loop is screaming around checking for keyboard input adjusting this right and our ball velocity was updated at least once when I hit the up and was set to from zero we added at least five maybe more if it caught multiple loops while I was holding the down arrow the up arrow so maybe it's 10 or 20 pixels um, so the our balls wide position is being is having 20 pixels added to it every time this loop comes around let's say and so the ball virtually moves upwards and then we draw it we paint the window we get events and we immediately come around and that is happening tens of thousands of times a second so we need to slow this down all right, so we're going to do that with a very, very simple delay loop using a counting loop. All right, so we said that when we want to do a counting loop, we typically look for the for loop. But we have some rules for the for loop. One, we must know exactly how many times we want to count. We must plan to go through every iteration of those counts. And we must have a simple condition and step increment, right? And then obviously some repeatable statement. So I think we can have all of that in this. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, down here at the bottom of our game loop, after we've gotten events, we need to go to sleep. A uh, matter of fact, we're going to get events last. We're going to put our sleep here. And we're just going to call it sleep. Right? And so what we're going to do is, one, we need a variable that we can just 
pretend is our sleep counter. So we're going to do an int and we're going to call it sleep and we'll just set it equal to zero. And this is all fictitious. We'll be getting rid of this eventually. And now we want to create our sleep loop. So we're going to do a for loop and we'll declare and initialize our control variable. In this case, we can just call it i and we'll set it equal to zero. And then a semicolon ends that statement and now we're in the conditional expression. So we're going to do well i is less than, and let's just pick a really large number. Let's say 20, thousand and then we need a simple step so we'll just do oops i plus plus as an incrementer and then we need the body of our loop right and we don't need to do an update statement because we have that in the incrementer so we just need something that we're doing inside the loop so we're just gonna add to sleep and this is not needed, it's just to give us something as a repeatable statement. All right, so every time we come through this loop, we'll check for keyboard input. If we've gotten any, we'll increase or decrease one of the velocities. And then we will adjust the ball for the current velocities, its location and draw the ball in its new location, paint the screen, go to sleep, wake up and check for events okay so let's build this and run it okay right now our ball isn't doing anything because we don't have any velocity i'm going to hit the up arrow and ball is gone that's how fast our loop is going so let's significantly increase this value all right, let's make it, right now it's at 20,000. Let's make it 200,000. And run this. And, whoa, flew off the screen. Let's see if I can get it to come back down. That should have stopped it. Let's see. No. Okay. All right, so let's go significantly more. Let's make it 200 million. All right, I believe in broad bracketing. Start with really small numbers. If that doesn't work, start with really big numbers and then kind of whittle it down somewhere in there. All right, so here we go. Oh, that's better. Whoa, still kind of crazy, right? Okay, so let's adjust, let's make this 500. Matter of fact, we're having to adjust this number so many times that I feel like we should have this somewhere else. Let's come over here to our header file and let's do a, we have our main window properties. We have game components, which we have our ball as the first game component. Let's do game settings. And let's do our constant int of sleep interval. And let's set that equal to, this is going to be our 500 million. All right, six zeros, uh, nine zeros, sorry, All right? Three, six, eight zeros, 500 million. All right, now let's grab that guy, copy him, come back here, and now we have something we can easily adjust. All right, matter of fact, I can sit here and run this And now, well, it didn't appear to, oh, there we go. Now it's moving. I got to hit, there I'm hitting the down arrow a bunch of times. So that speed appears to be too slow. Okay, so let's go back to our 200 million. Let's make it 
adjust by two pixels each each increment. to hit the up arrow a bunch and it's barely moving so I'm gonna stop that and let's go let's I'm gonna get rid of a zero and make that a five and this should be 50 million now what we're gonna find is and as a matter of fact this will be different on everybody's computer depending on how fast your processor is, but that's a little bit better. So here I've hit up three times, here I've hit left three times, and now I'm gonna hit down a bunch, and right a bunch, and up a bunch. All right, so and I, if I go the op, use the opposite button of where it's going, I can stop it. Okay, so this is like a pretty good speed for me right now so you'll have to find which values work best for you but see if you can get that ball to stay around on the screen a little bit it should be able to go off the screen and if I hit down and left a bunch I might be able to get it to come back no okay Okay, now let's go back here. And the last thing for this lab, we talked about our different types of loops. We just created a counting loop down here for our sleep interval. Remember, this variable is not really part of it. This was part of the repeatable statements. This was our counting loop using a for loop. And if we look at our main game loop, which we haven't been talking about very much, this we said would be a flag loop because this function obviously returns a boolean expression in this case it happens to be a bool data type and so we have no limiter value and we have no conditional expression so this is obviously a flag loop well we're just going to adjust this a little bit let's start by creating a bool variable and call it i'm going to call it game over and I'm going to set it to false because we don't want the game to be over when we start. And I'm going to take this variable and I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to cut this out. And so I want while well, not game over. All right? And then I'm going to come down here. And here's where I get events. Right? And get events is where I know if somebody closed the window or moved the window or gave me keyboard input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check right here. I'm going to say game over is going to equal not window closing. All right. So if the window is closing, I would get back a true and that would make it a false and I don't want that I want game over to be false and if the window is closing I would want game over to be true and so I'm gonna say um, end the game if window closed And so that would I'd catch or catch that from get events and set game over to true if the window is closing. Otherwise, this will always set it to false. And then when I come back around here to the top, while not game over, I'll keep doing this processing. So that shouldn't have changed anything now. I should be able to run. And if I close the window, it should end the game, and I end up down here on this return statement. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, uh, actually, I have to end this. Okay, so let's do this. Let's add a new choice into our switch statement. And we have to remember, if we put it as the last one, we got to remember to add a break in here. Break. 
going to do a new case. I'm going to let uh, Visual Studio format it for me. I'm going to do the X key. And this is going to be exit. And I'm going to set game over equals true. All right, so if the user decides they want to exit the game, then I'll set game over to true so that we end here. All right, and this is okay. I don't mind that I'm drawing the ball in its last location. I don't really want to sleep though. If I've chosen to exit, I don't want to sleep. So let's skip that. If game, or let's do if not game over, then we'll do this sleep. So let's say um, uh, if not exiting, or let's do sleep if not. If, sleep, if not end of game. Sorry, I was trying to think how I wanted to word that that, that time. And then down here, I could put this inside that as well, but instead, I still want to get my events. But here, I don't want to set game over to true here and then set it to false because the window is not closing yet. So I can do some different methods for this. I could put an if around this and say, if not game over, then set game over this. Or I could say game over is going to be the current value of game over, which will be true or false, or the value of window closing. So I can do that here by saying game over equals game over or window closing. So if either one of those is true, game over will be true. If both of them are false, game over will be false. Right, and now we should be able to build and run. Okay, so I move my ball around, and if I hit the X key, the game ends. Windows not ending, but that's another story. Okay, so that's it for this lab. Um, I'm going to ask that you finish the lab, and I want a short video um, taken with your cell phone or a screen capture, uh, very short of you moving the ball around. Show me you can keep it on the screen. All right. Have fun with it.